Herbert George Columbine was born in Penge, South London, on the 28th of November 1893. He was born into a military family. His father was killed in the Boer War, serving with the Lincolnshire Regiment at Zillicats on the 11th of July 1900, when Herbert was just six years old. By that time, the family had moved to Essex, to the seaside town of walton on the Nays. Herbert joined the British Army in 1911 joining the 19th Queen's Alexandra's own Royal Hussars. In June 1916, with the formation of the Machine Gun Corps, he was transferred into the 9th Machine Gun Squadron, 9th Cavalry Brigade, 1st Cavalry Division, as part of the MGC Cavalry. Alongside the infantry branch of the Machine Gun Corps formed in October 1915, there was a cavalry branch formed to provide machine gun squadrons to support cavalry brigades. Each squadron had six sections each of two Vickers machine guns. Like the infantry, they used limbered wagons and pack saddlery to carry their guns, but their role was more offensive and exploitative in line with the overall principles for cavalry units. Hence the smaller subunits of two guns each to give better flexibility. The 9th Brigade Machine Gun Squadron was formed from units of the 9th Cavalry Brigade, part of the 1st Cavalry Division. It was formed on 28th of February 1916 and it included the machine gun sections of the 15th Hussars, the 19th Hussars and the 1st Bedfordshire Yeomanry. Its first action as part of the reserve to the 14th Corps of 4th Army was on the 15th of September 1916. It was involved in many engagements subsequent to this throughout the war and would often be part of mobile reserves or providing additional machine guns for preparatory barrages or other tasks. The squadron would eventually return to the UK alongside the 1st Cavalry Division in August 1919 and was disbanded while serving in Ireland on the 1st of December 1919. Herbert had already seen combat at Mons in 1914 and at the Second Battle of Ypres in 1915 with the 19th Hussars, leading up to his Victoria Cross action on the 22nd of March 1918 at Hervilly Wood on the second day of the German Spring Offensive, launched to attempt to knock Allied forces out of the war. This was the second Victoria Cross awarded to a member of the MGC during the Kaiserschlacht, the first being won by Lieutenant Alan Kerr, of the 61st Division the day previously. To learn more about his action, use the link in the description or see the link at the end of the video. The 9th Machine Gun Squadron were in billets in late March 1918 before being moved to Burness near St Quentin on the 20th of March, as detailed in their war diaries. 20th of the 3rd, 1918. Moved to Burness, received at 7.45am, squadron moved off to Brigade Starting Point and then to Burness. 22nd of the 3rd, 1918. Remainder of squadron stood two up, 1am, and then moved to Montigny Farm. The squadrons were shelled as enemy troops started their assault onto the British positions. On the 22nd of March, Herbert was in a trench in Hervilly Wood. An eyewitness to Columbine's heroism, PGC Atkinson, describes the makeup of positions held in the woods during the German attack and Herbert's subsequent actions on the day. Part of our defence system included machine gun posts somewhat in advance of the main trench. The men working this were all knocked out. Running the gauntlet of very heavy fire, Private Columbine rushed forward and took charge of this gun. He was followed by some comrades, and in spite of the fact that the whole of the enemy machine guns were in immediate neighbourhood, concentrated their heaviest fire upon the post, which was almost unprotected by any of the devices commonly used, Columbine kept the machine gun going for over four hours. At the time, the enemy had been working around the position with strong forces and actually had the posts cut off, save for one narrow gap by which it was still possible to communicate with the main position. For the whole of the time, save when he went across the fire-swept ground to bring ammunition, the brave chap remained at his post, and despite frequent rushes, he kept the enemy at bay. In the course of the fight, a German officer appeared and repeatedly urged his men to the attack on the isolated post but every rush of the Germans was stopped in a few yards by the deadly fire from this brave gunner. He was actually wounded, but continued to work the gun in spite of that. Columbine defended his section from the hours of 9am to 1pm in the afternoon. I will now read from his medal citation from the 3rd of May 1918. During this time, wave after wave of the enemy failed to get up to him. Owing to his being attacked by a low-flying aeroplane, the enemy last gained a strong footing in the trench on either side, 
the position being untenable, he ordered the two remaining men to get away, and, though being bombed from either side, kept his gun firing and inflicting tremendous losses. He was eventually killed by a bomb, which blew up him and his gun. He showed throughout the highest valour, determination and self-sacrifice. Atkinson heard the last words heard from Columbine. Save yourselves, I'll carry on, was what he said. They were reluctant to go, but he insisted, in the end they came to see the force of his contention, that there was no point in sacrificing three lives where one was enough. He shouted a few words of farewell, and that was the last his comrades heard from him. Herbert's mother, Emma Columbine, was awarded her son's posthumous VC at Buckingham Palace on the 22nd of June, three months to the day of her 24-year-old son's gallant actions in her villa wood. On the 27th of November 1920, in his hometown of walton on the Nays, a bronze bust was erected in Columbine's honour, unveiled by Lord Bing of Vimy, which now stands in a leisure centre in walton on Nays called the Columbine Centre. The plaque underneath the bust reads, He refused to retire when others might have done so. In 2014, a full-size statue was unveiled on the seafront in walton on Nays in memorial to Columbine's bravery after a statue fund was set up under the patronage of Dame Judi Dench. The statue, sculpted by John Doubleday, was unveiled on the 1st of August 2014 and was unveiled by Lord Field Marshal Guthrie. Columbine's Victoria Cross is now on display at the Essex Regimental Museum in Chelmsford. Thanks for watching. Many of these men did not consider themselves heroes, but these stories give us an insight into the actions that more soldiers would have experienced, possibly carrying out similar but without the subsequent recognition. These videos form a part of a year of events to remember the Corps and its disbandment in 1922. And be sure to join us on the 16th of July at the National Army Museum in London to learn more. For more on the Machine Gun Corps and the Vickers Gun, Make sure to follow the Vickers MG Collection and Research Association on social media and stay tuned for more. Don't forget to like, share and subscribe to the channel if you're new around here. And stay tuned for more military history.